about to have a special guest here. It's Trevor there. Hey, Shannon, here how are you? Great, how are you, Trevor? So you're out in uh, traffic with Elroy. Out and about. Elroy's looking just good, looking, got the vest on. Just looking for some some love where he can spread his love. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give Elroy a little bit of uh, privacy here as we uh, kick off our <laughs> webinar. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come here. So, while well, Elroy does his business, um, <laughs> I just wanted to uh, to say a quick hello to all the people at the CU Therapy uh, account and uh, definitely all the people over at the uh, Carlton Future account. Um, as we as we launch into this, I just want to do a couple maybe quick housekeeping things first before we get started. Is that cool with you? Totally, yeah. All if right. you just want to go ahead with that, we're just going to walk back home. All right, walk it. <laughs> so... Um, Probably one of the very first things I do, I should say hi to everybody. My name is Trevor, and I'm National Recruitment Advisor at Carleton University. And one of the very first things that I would do typically when I'm on a call is I would apologize in advance for my dog barking and going insane. <laughs> you don't have to apologize there. Yes, I, I think I'm getting a, a hall pass on that one with you. Um, my dog, Lola, uh, Lola Olivia Lewis, her, the acronym is LOL, by the way. Oh, my God, nice. Yeah, I know, right? Too cute. Um, she... Uh, she has like 7 million arch enemies. It's every squirrel in my neighborhood. So <laughs> at any given moment, she could just like go off. So I will say that in advance. Fair enough. Well, we know what that's about. I bet you do. Luckily, I'm wearing my headphones, so Elroy won't hear her and he won't All reciprocate. Right. Super. <laughs> so I wanted to welcome everybody to our uh, See at Home uh, webinar series. Uh, at the end of this, I'm going to show some websites and things that will help people to keep in uh, in touch with us over the course of, of the month of May, because we'll be having webinars like this uh, through the Carlton Future site, like, every day. Um, we have a number of themes. Uh, this week is our community. Obviously, you're a huge part of that. Uh, we had Kim and Jim doing uh, Mind the Brain earlier. That was amazing, and they promoted us pretty pretty hard on that, which was amazing. And uh, going forward, we're going to talk about our programs uh, next week. Um, we have all of our resources, like Paul Menton Center, awards and financial aid. So th there's a lot going to happen this month. So we look forward to having everybody uh, join us all month long. Um, tomorrow is we're going to have Stanley Philip is going to come back and do another uh, session. And it's going to be a live Q&A. So I know people on, there's a lot of students on here that are in the, um, in the process of getting uh, offers and accepting offers, and they're worried about the residents and all these kind of things. So we're going to have a ton of time tomorrow to go into those kind of things. And on Friday, uh, we're going to have Carly Glantz from our team who's going to do um, is going to soar in as a raven should uh, on Spirit Day. So Friday is Spirit Day at Carleton, and we'll be talking about uh, sort of doing a recap of all the things that we did this week. So that's kind of some. Uh, a few housekeeping things that I just wanted to get to real quick. And um, hello, going to get a treat or something. That's good. And uh, before we do that, I just want to take a personal moment. Uh, I know that Jim and Kim had talked about uh, being well. And uh, one of the strategies for being well was to you know, develop new friendships and um, a number of a million other things. Um, and one of the things I talked about was getting outside, which you guys just did. Now you're back mm -hmm. in. And um, when I went out at lunch today, went out for a little stroll, a little run, uh, I, I was seeing signs everywhere. Um, as we narrow in on the topic of support for, for this half hour, um, I just wanted to sort of hijack this real quick. And just, uh, I think it would be, we would be remiss if we didn't um, dedicate this webinar to the health support workers who are out there and making a massive difference every day. Um, a lot of people putting their, you know, their personal existence online to help people in need. And I saw signs everywhere when I was on my walk. So I just wanted to put a little plug for those people for doing that good work. That's great. Thanks, Trevor. So this is a great segue for Shannon as, as a, someone who offers a tremendous amount of, of support that uh, they call positive support. <laughs> uh, for for the students, um, I I'm guilty of not knowing a lot about what you do. Back up. 
Sure. Um, so I'm learning. I'm looking forward to learning a lot too. My daughter um, just finished her first year in the Bachelor of Cognitive Science at Carleton, and um, uh, she had mentioned often that you know they were they were taking a break to go over and see the dogs and, and whatnot. So. Um, I know she made a big uh, impact. You made a big impact on her, and uh, it's an exciting thing to be part of. That's fantastic. So I wanted to um, welcome you, Shannon, and it's good to e see you again. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we will get off track many times with all our, our maritime connection. Well, um, that, you you kind of just stole my thunder there because I was just going to say that next is that uh, Shannon and I didn't really know each other all that well until last week, until we started launching these webinars and whatnot, and we found out. Um, that we were both Islanders from the Maritimes. <laughs> and so that kind of begged the question, who on earth had the idea that two Maritimers could make, could have a conversation that could only be 30 minutes long? <laughs> and know, I just wanted to show you, I have PEI in the background there. There you go. That's Good a times. nice beach scene. And we have nice. our island proud little deco Loving thing it. over here. Loving it. They say, <laughs> if we all, they say if we all go home, the island will sink. Yeah, it's true. That's my dad humor. So I'm going to try Maybe not some, to do that. Some some staycations happening on PEI this year, I think. Yes. So we're going to do our best to try to stay a half an hour. Um, we're definitely not going to do that if we, we chit-chat you and I about us and the island and all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> um, but I did want to, before you get going, one other thing is uh, we would really love to know where people are joining us from. Um, if you could maybe give us a comment here and there about where you're from, maybe what program you're going into, um, and, and lots of questions. Well, we're here to answer questions. So, well, I'm not as much as Shannon because she's the expert, but uh, we'd love to see your questions. Uh, we'd love to see who you are and definitely the program that you're excited to join. Or, or maybe you're already a, a Carleton student. You just want to say hello and have some thoughts. We're looking forward to that too. So see some Toronto people so far. Mm -hmm. Getting lots of hearts so far. Oh, Saskatchewan, right on. So we, we've That's been great. doing these things all week, and we had people from – there's somebody from Charlottetown. Look at that. Look at um, that. We had people – look at that. We had uh, people from all over the world this week, uh, which is really super exciting. And um, here in Ottawa, it's a nice sunny day, um, and we're looking forward to, to interacting with you. So what I'm going to do is we're going to dive right in, and I'm going to have Shannon um, – Back up. Maybe I'll just prompt a question, a quick question for you to, we, we'd like to obviously just know more about you and uh, how you got into this program and sure. maybe obviously about Elroy as well. Yeah. So Elroy is a three-year-old Dalmatian. As you can see, he requires constant attention. He's, uh, he loves um, meeting all new people and um, he became a, quickly became a great therapy dog, especially for his tricks. He can do lots of tricks and he likes to, uh, mess around on camera a lot and say hi hi oh say wow hi, everybody yeah what a good boy smart hi good boy so um students like to come and see him kind of being silly but also stay um <laughs> he he can chill out a lot as well and when people come to visit in person he likes to um kind of lay down and give his belly and that kind of thing and just like lap up the attention um, so I actually started, some people might also know that, um, I started the therapy dogs program at Carlton with my dog blue, who, uh, unfortunately very sadly passed away unexpectedly, um, this year earlier in January. And so Elroy's his little brother, um, and, uh, blue was just a natural therapy dog. And we started working on campus, um, back in 20. 16 or so um, when we first started working in residence and then we started working in um, in uh, thanks for the comments guys we, um, we missed Lou a lot too um, yeah. and uh, we worked in ESP so that's the enriched support program in uh, the Center for Initiatives and in Education which offers a program for students who may not meet traditional entrance requirements and they um, had their own embedded therapy dog, uh, which was the pilot for a little while. And then um, when that was so successful, then we added uh, six more dogs to the team. We expanded the program and put them all in different areas of campus. And then that was so well received that we expanded the program again. So this, this past year has been the third year um, at, 
the, the second year of it sort of expanded and official as Carlton Therapy Dogs. Um, and it's been a pretty fast and wild and awesome ride, I think, for a lot of people at Carlton, staff and faculty included. They love the program. They love um, being able to see the dogs kind of as part of the family, part of the community on campus. So how it works is the um, faculty and staff have the ability to apply to become um, therapy dog handlers. So they can have their own dog um, come with them to work once a week or so and offer some support to students in a varying capacity. So whatever capacity suits them and their faculty and their, their or their department and um, uh, wherever they're kind of interested. So it's really cool because then, um, you know, we get to bring our dogs to work and share the joy that they bring us. Um, and, you know, you make a lot of new connections that you wouldn't otherwise make and meet a lot of people and um, you're supporting, you know, students and more like students and staff and faculty all enjoy the dogs. So um, it's really been pretty overwhelming how, how much joy it brings. And so since we can't be on campus, we thought, you know, the amount of joy that they do bring, we'd like to try to replicate that virtually if we can. So we started doing these live sessions and they've been going pretty well. People seem to tune in and enjoy watching the dogs just kind of doing their doggy thing um, in their element, at their, in their own homes. Like dogs with jobs. Remember that show? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so um, I guess what I wonder is, how is it that people find the dogs? For those like, who are just tuning in, maybe we should also yeah. just repeat what, what we're doing right now. Yeah, good idea. Um, just because I see a question there about that. Um, mm. So we're just talking with recruitment to um, sort of, talk about what the therapy dogs are and hopefully any prospective students that are out there watching this on recruitment um, on the CU therapy, the, sorry, the Carleton future Instagram. Um, those of you who are interested to know what it's like to be at Carleton, this is one of the amazing programs that we have um, at Carleton. So yeah, sorry, Trevor, go ahead. No, it's a really good point because um, people are jumping in here and it's good to bring them up to speed. Um, so we, we, we're doing kind of a, a, a cool collab here because we have the Carlton Future Students Instagram is collaborating with the, C, the Carlton Therapy Dog Instagram. So we have a mixture of people here. We have current Carlton students and, you know, um, people a part of the Carlton community. And we have people that are just interacting with the commu our community for the first time. So um, maybe they've accepted an offer. They haven't yet been here. They're preparing to come to campus. So, um, so we have probably, I don't know, 8,000 people or something that are the follow the two counts. So good to bring everybody up to speed. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that, that I like about what you do is from our perspective in student recruitment, and we go all over the world to talk to students. And we spend a lot of time talking about the programs, uh, residents, uh, the, the national capital advantage. Uh, uh, we used to go talking about awards and financial things. And all those are really very important, vital things to, to choosing us and being part of our community. Um, but we don't really, uh, I think as a student at least, maybe the first thing that's not top of mind is are the type of support programs that we have. And yeah. it, it's not top of mind because there's a lot of other boxes to check before they, when they choose Carlton and, and come to the university. But we're really lucky to have a, you know, a resource rich environment for student support. And this is just an amazing example of how we do that. I, as I mentioned at the outset, my daughter is in the cognitive science degree. And that was like the highlight of her week every week. She's so excited to see you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's cool about it is that, you know, um, we're just offering something that, you know, for, for everything on campus, there's always a bigger purpose to it. And no matter what support, there's always going to be um, – you know, some strategic reason behind it and that kind of thing. So what's cool about the dogs is that while we are able to also offer something that is just plain fun, like it's fun that people get to see dogs on campus wearing this cute little vest and stuff, but it's also um, a mental health strategy. So we know by science that um, 
dogs do help with our mental health and we've we've uh, proved the viability of it um, through assessing our students who do attend the therapy dog sessions and we know it's a valuable mental health support for them but it also it can be a valuable um, navigation support for them in that they might come and see the dog to see the dog and then they talk to the handler, and the handler has that connection to the university, either a faculty member or a staff member. And they can tell you a bit more about what they do on campus and um, other resources that might be available to you that you may not have otherwise found out about um, because it's kind of, you know, easier to approach and trust somebody who has a friendly dog with them. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so. Where do you, do you have a schedule for where the dogs are every week? Is there somewhere place where someone will go and they'll say, you know, I could really use some, some time with a dog. Like, can they go online and find out where you're going to be at any given week or like, how do they know where you are? Definitely. So if, uh, if anyone just goes to um, carlton.ca slash wellness slash dogs, uh, they can check out the schedule that is usually posted and the dogs when we are, you know, although we're adapting for, for the circumstances right now, um, you won't see any schedule that's up right now, obviously, because we're not obviously, on campus. Yeah. But when we are back on campus, um, the appearances are all listed and um, just, you know, it just starts, it, there's a calendar and you can just look at what's the dates upcoming and where the, which dog is going to be where, at what time, what location. Um, so it is all listed on our schedule page uh, at carlton.ca slash wellness slash dogs. Um, nice. Right now, you'll see just sort of an advertisement that says, you know, tune in to us live on Instagram because we are doing um, virtual sessions uh, five days a week. Cool. And how many dogs do you do you have in any given time? We have uh, 14 dogs right now. Oh, wow. Um, so hopefully more um, as the years progress. Uh you know, we don't need, you know, there is a cap to how many we actually need in order to service the campus. But, um, you know, we're still looking for more if anybody's interested. Um, we, um, we usually, that with, with around this number of dogs, we usually can have around two to three dogs per day available mm -hmm. on campus. So whenever students are on campus, they can take advantage of that support. So we have a question <clears throat> that's popped up here it says can we still collect business cards for all the CU therapy docs <laughs> well I, if you... I don't even know what that means yeah we do have business cards for oh, all nice. the dogs that's so if I would take a special request if uh if Jen wants to email me there um my email is uh shannon.noonan at carlton.ca or again you can email wellness at carlton.ca <laughs> and uh, I, I might take a special request to provide you with said collector's items. Nice, nice. So all the business cards are really adorable because they each have their own card. And unlike staff business cards, the dogs all have their headshot on their business card. Oh, no, really? So they have a picture and all their favorite hobbies and toys and their <laughs> ages. And then some resources. <laughs> each dog recommends a different mental health resource on the campus. Wow. So, yeah, it's a good collector's item. <laughs> so I have a dog and I want to be part of this. Do I have to go through a training program? Um, mm -hmm. Like, you know, you, you know, when you, you see like the, the guide dogs, they have to go through so much. Um, do you have a training program or do they have to present some sort of like, what do they got? How do they get involved? Totally. Yeah. So um, the process has been sort of, uh, basically get in touch with me, Shannon Noonan at Carleton. If you're interested, if you have to be a staff or faculty member at Carleton, um, to participate because that's the key to the support is that you are a community member who is actively supporting students. And, uh, if your dog is suitable, then we can have conversation about how to kind of move forward and all the handlers participate in a, um, eight, eight week training uh, session with me, um, which includes uh, human training on mental health and um, doggy training as well for obedience. So we go through um, in a six week class, we'll go through work with your dogs and all the dogs together um, so that we can see how they react to one another and such. And then we do two cross evaluations at the end 
of that training process. So all the dogs are certified canine good neighbors, as well as um, they take the Ottawa therapy dogs evaluation or test. Mm. And so that includes 14 different steps, which I won't go into detail and list, but you know, mm. things like that you might assume your dog might react to the dogs mm. uh, are have to remain neutral towards, or at least recover really well. So loud, scary noises or strange looking people um, like with different outfits on and stuff or wheelchairs and, you know, things that a dog might, you know, reasonably react to. Um, These dogs are a little bit more bomb proof. So do you, do you you have instances where the dogs like get too excited or too upset and like, like how how do you deal with this situation? Because it's, you know, people get, I'm sure they get really excited. Like we have, we have a, a question here, you know, can we take pictures with the puppies on the campus? Like, totally. Like people get just so excited. I know even just walking my dog around the neighborhood, people get super excited to see it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So how do you so do with that? All of our dogs have to be comfortable with, um, uh, tolerant of a lot of, um, touching and hugging. They have to tolerate those kind of things. They can't have yeah. any sort of, um, body contact averseness because Mm. we can't control what people will do when their visits always um and so people have different experience levels with dogs and people have different um sort of awarenesses of what what's appropriate and so we have to be ready that the dog's not going to react negatively um to somebody doing something that might make them a tad bit uncomfortable however the handlers are also able to protect their dogs. So if someone's doing something my dog doesn't like, I might just say to them, uh, you know what, why don't you try this instead? And that's part of the training is that help Mm. to train them how to be compassionate, um, helpful handlers, as well as in, you know, awareness of mental health resources on campus, but they also have to be proactive handlers and able to, um, you know, shut down an interaction like that uh, without, making someone feel uncomfortable or making them feel shut out or making them feel stupid, essentially. Um, They, they have to be really situationally aware all the time as well. So it takes a Mm -hmm. special person to be a handler as well as a special dog. So it's a, it's a big, uh, it's a very cool combination to be able when you get them. Yeah. I was wondering about that because sometimes you see people that, that handle sort of, um, that handle dogs and, and you're told like not to go near them because they're working. Um, yeah. Where, totally. where this is like the opposite of that. Like you want them yeah. to interact and touch them and that kind of thing. So. Go oh, cookies. Yeah. He's getting all of the treats right now because all the treats are like good patient boy. Power loading the treats yeah. for the show. Good there boy. you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're totally right. So there are situations where you wouldn't want to approach uh, like a service dog, for example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So all of our dogs, we usually have um, something on our leash or our vest that says ask to pet so that students um, can be aware that this is a dog that you're allowed to interact with. And sometimes people don't notice that little sign. So mm-hmm. often handlers are intuitively picking up on signs that we see when we're stuck in an elevator with someone and they're kind of giving us a a side eye, like they're desperately wanting to pet our dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we can sort of say to them, hey, would you like to pet? And they usually like collapse on top of the dog and just love <laughs> it, like want so badly to pet them. So, but it's really good because it means that the public is generally pretty aware and trained um, from a young age not to pet service dogs. Do they have to be certain dimensions? Like my dog's pretty small. <laughs> uh, you know, and like I, from getting to know dog owners, some people are, they're like big dog people. And some people are like little dog people. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a well, little that's... dog guy. Like I like to hold it in my arm and sits in my lap. I like lap dogs. But yeah. she might be, obviously she'd be too cranky for this job. <laughs> little, little dogs got the big attitudes. But um, is there such a thing as too small? No, we have one that's 10 pounds actually. So we oh, have... Yeah. A dog named Monty. Ready? Well. Ta- go on your bed. Um, <laughs> and he's a miniature pincher, and he's 10 years old and 10 pounds. <laughs> oh, wow. So he passed the therapy exam last summer, 
and was able to start working. And some of the students really prefer the small dogs, like you say. So we do have dogs of all shapes and sizes. I think our biggest dog is Murphy, who's probably 90 pounds or so. Wow, wow. Um, someone's asking how old is Elroy. He's three years old. Mm. Were you this well behaved when you were three years old, I wonder? Definitely I not. <laughs> Say hi. How does Elroy get his name? Hi. Say hi, wave. Well, Elroy, um, as I mentioned, was the brother of my dog, Blue. Mm -hmm. um, they were brothers from different mothers. <laughs> but um, the names kind of went well together because it was my boy, Blue, and his boy, Elroy. Mm. So that's kind of what we went with. There's uh, the Jetsons, has their theme song is... Here's George Jetson, his boy, yeah. Elroy. <laughs> there you go. So that's, that's really great. where it comes from. Um, we're seeing lots of treats going in, so they're wondering what is the favorite treat. Yeah. His, Elroy's favorite treat is probably hot dogs. Mm -hmm. And most dogs, that's pretty My successful. My kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see if he'll put away his toys just while we're talking. Right. Ready? Come on. Ready? And dump out all these. Let's go. Ready, bud? Come put these away. Ready, come. Come on over. So uh, you guys, you can keep asking questions if you like. Oh, okay, you I was one. just kind of enthralled because my dog. Was yeah, yeah. Me. Good boy. Good <laughs> Good my dog looked at me like you're crazy. So we literally are kind of coming up to the last couple of minutes. This has flown by really fast. I, I think the last, the one thing that I'd like to know is, um, do you have any? Like funny stories, personal highlights? Oh, I think my personal highlight is, uh, well, there's many, many, many. Um, but many stories of students who um, say that the dogs get them through the week and that kind of thing. Yeah. Good boy. Good job. Um, one cool thing is Murphy is one of the youngest uh, therapy dogs ever. And he <laughs> was certified when he was only one year old. So that's a, that's a record for sure. Um, yeah. and pretty cool. Um, yeah. I think, um, you know, just seeing stories of students who are so far away from home, especially international students who really identify with this program and have family dogs back home that they can't visit for months and months mm -hmm. at a time, um, sometimes even years. Um, and then they really appreciate this support. And it also brings, like, even their family as well, they can't visit. So it brings um, kind of an element of touch to campus that is returned. Mm -hmm. that, whereas mm -hmm. otherwise it might be inappropriate for, you know, your professor or someone to give you a hug. But the dog is totally fine. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. a few people that would like to see your dog go to their house and clean their house for them now. <laughs> you don't do that service, right? Yeah, not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. He's gonna, he, he'll be a merry maid one day. Good. Oh, back up. Toys. With that, Shannon, I think we're, this is, we're coming up to our time, so I want to thank you for, for welcoming us to your conversation with Therapy uh, Dog uh, Insta Live. And, Thanks uh, for having the Carlton, us. Yeah, having all the Carlton Future students on board here as well. Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. So um, thank you again. Um, Stay safe. Be well. Very nice to meet Me you, Elroy. Thanks for taking Say us bye. for a walk. And look at that. Fantastic. Bye. <laughs> for all of the people, just real quick at the end here, um, I know a lot of people are going to wondering, like, can I see this video later? Um, we're going to try to get it and uh, see you home. Um, but I'm just putting up right now just a couple of URLs and, and some social media ways to keep in touch with us. The, mm. uh, these webinars are brand new and they're going to run throughout the month, like every single day and different topics. So yeah, check in here. And once again, if you had a lot of questions that were of general nature and not just for Elroy, but mm -hmm. that you want to know about your situation and the admissions and so forth, uh, yeah, check in with us for the rest of the month. And once again, it was a, it was a great pleasure to see you guys all here today and be well. I've just posted a link there as well for the wellness website. If yeah. uh, folks want to check out resources that are available to them right now during COVID, um, there's tons of links on there. There's links that are for provincial, um, links that are mm -hmm. for international resources. If you're out there and you need support, um, please, please go and visit 
the carlton.ca slash wellness and look for the provincial or international support resources um, so that you can k- get connected. Um, and it's always um, available. We have, there's hotlines, there's all kinds of stuff on there, um, online supports and, you know, sp- something for everybody. So if anybody is in need of support anytime, just go and check that out. Thank you, Shannon. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Trevor.